Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to be discussing the VIX, which is the Volatility or Fear Index. So if you've ever wondered how you can make money on a stock market correction, pullback or crash, then I think that this video may be useful to you. So uh, real quick, just want to remind you that I'm not a financial advisor, not recommending any of the ticker symbols that I bring up today later in the video. You should always do your own research before investing in the stock market as it does carry some risks. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get right on into it. So what is the VIX? Basically, guys, in a nutshell, the VIX is an index that basically um, it, it measures the market volatility of the S&P 500 index based on their options. So basically, the more options being purchased in the S&P 500, the more volatility and uncertainty. So the VIX would go up and vice versa. The less options being bought in the S&P 500, the VIX will go down. So in other words, if the market's going up in a bullish pattern, then the VIX is going to be going down in a downtrend with the occasional spikes um, in volatility. And if the market is having some type of significant pullback or any type of pullback, then the VIX will rise. And depending on how volatile those pullbacks or corrections are, these crashes are, then you'll see uh, different levels of spikes in the VIX itself. So I have the one year chart pulled up on the VIX and I wanted to show you that this was back in January of 2020 and you know things were just kind of chugging along and then all of a sudden you know the pandemic hit and we had a lot of fear and uncertainty to where the VIX spiked all the way up to 82.69. As you see that's a, a really significant spike from you know 15 or 16 bucks and you know, once we got our correction and started moving back towards an uptrend, people came into the market and started buying when everything was at, you know, uh, really low prices. Then you see how the VIX started gradually coming down with the occasional spikes as well. Every time that we had a pullback or some type of correction or some type of, you know, catalyst or that, you know, kind of spooked the market, you see the occasional spikes. But Overall, the VIX is going to either trade sideways or kind of go into a downtrend. So next, guys, I want to take you over to a website. It's called VIXcentral.com. So if you just type that into your browser and pull that up, you can follow along here in the video. Uh, so basically, this is the VIX term structures for um, the next 30 days. And <clears throat> these, um, these are labeled as uh, M. So this would be M1. M2, M3, M4, and so on and so forth. And I really pay attention to the first two. So this one here, as you see, it expires in four days. And then this M1 will be wiped off the board and M2 turns into M1. And then M3 turns into M2, okay? And basically this is saying that, um, you know, this is the basically just the futures of the VIX. They're predicting that it's going to look like this over a certain time period. And if you look over here, this green line, this shows what the VIX actually is. And you can watch this in real time. Okay, so you can watch this number change. If we have some type of market correction, then you'll basically see this number rise. And depending on how big of a correction, how volatile it is, it'll either rise really, really quickly or really, really slowly, depending on what's going on. So in uh, this blue line here, you can also see that change. So uh, this looks more sort of like an uptrend. And if the market gets really, really um, bullish, I'm sorry, bearish, then this could actually change up to where the futures will dip down. And it'll look like, um, you know, we're, we're turning into a, uh, going into a downtrend. So um, it's something to kind of keep an eye on, especially now with the market being at all time highs. Today, we did get a little bit of a pullback. So it's worth keeping an eye on to see, um, you know, what's going to happen moving forward. Are we going to push forward and get even higher? Not sure. Or if we're going to come lower or not. But pullbacks are healthy, guys, either in any type of uh, a major index or uh, individual stock. Also, I want you to check out this number down here. So anytime this number is positive, especially over one, then it is showing that we are in a uh, bullish pattern. And 
anytime we're in the negative that shows that we were in a bearish pattern or we're having a lot of selling off this number can change fairly quickly I've seen this number change from you know a positive to a negative in, in just a couple of hours just based on some some type of catalyst in the market uh, specifically in 2020 when I believe Jerome Powell came on and started talking about the economy and it spooked everybody and we saw a big pullback and it was just really volatile at times last year so that's uh, that's something to also keep an eye on so um, anytime that we are in a bullish pattern then this is basically called contango and then anytime that we're in a bearish pattern it's called downwardation so guys I wanted to show you how you can possibly spot a market correction uh, you know possibly before it happens so if you go to Google and type in fear and greed index and it's going to be the first link that comes up on the um, money.cnn.com website so you can click that and then it'll bring up this website here so there's going to be this little meter over here and it's going to tell you a number it's going to either be you know in the green or in the red showing that the market is extremely um, bullish and greedy or is it you know kind of in between or is it really bearish and people are really scared okay so if you want to kind of understand more about the fear and greed index there's a little video right here you can watch it's only a minute 15 seconds they'll explain it to you uh, really really quickly and easily but in a nutshell basically the higher the market goes and the more money that's piling into it this number is going to increase okay and as this number gets higher then that should put a red flag on you saying well you know if, if I was thinking about taking profits on some particular stocks then now might be a good time because we're due for a pullback and vice versa if this number is all the way in the red which we were in extreme fear back in March that should kind of give you a heads up saying man this would be a really really good time to buy okay so this is just another fact another way to kind of keep up with the markets and um, not necessarily plan the market but it kind of gives you an idea of are we going to be due for a pullback soon or you know do we have some room to to run towards the upside so this fear and greed index I'll just show you they have uh, seven factors that make up the fear and greed index which is stock price strength market momentum stock price breadth put and call options market volatility safe haven demand and junk bond demand so you can kind of read on those if you'd like but those are the seven factors I personally don't read anything about that I just go look at this number and I can see you know yesterday we were at a 70 and I looked at the numbers we were at you know we we're getting pretty overextended so I kind of expected that we were going to have either a slight pullback or a pretty big sell-off or something you know it's just kind of common sense what goes up does come down even if it's temporary or just a slight pullback so um, let me go ahead and and start talking about guys how you can put, uh, potentially make money on a correction or a crash in the market first ticker symbol I want to bring up to you is UVXY basically this tracks the VIX and if you remember what I said earlier in the video the VIX basically works against the market so if the market is going up then the VIX will go down and so will UVXY but vice versa if the market is going to crash or pull back then UVXY is going to get a spike in uh, basically the uh, the value so uh, we'll look here back in January and you notice that this is extremely similar to the VIX right and it's you know just kind of trading sideways and all of a sudden all the uncertainty happens and UVXY shot up all the way to $110.63 people started piling into the market and here we go again it starts downtrend occasional spike downtrend occasional spike and <clears throat> this uh, this stock here well it's not a stock it's an ETF but uh, I want to show you although you can make money off of it it's not something you want to just buy and hold and wait um, unless unless the you know <laughs> unless you kind of have 
some type of uh, plan in place of when to get out. But uh, let me just show you exactly why I'm saying that is ever since inception, this has gradually just gone down and been decaying. Okay, so it's not something to buy and hold and be like, okay, it's going to hit, you know, $10 million one day because it's not going to do that. But you can make money off of it if you know what you're doing. So let me show you how I've traded this before and show you that uh, you can make, you know, money doing swing trades or if there's a big crash, uh, you can, you know, make a, a decent amount of money and it can also be a way to kind of, I guess, your, protect, your, protect your portfolio in a sense, you know, if this number is extremely low, you can buy some shares of this and then, you know, on every pullback in the market, you know, this this will rise in value, you can sell it and then maybe buy more shares of your other stocks that have dipped in value before they go up. All right, guys, so I'm on the S&P 500 chart, and we're going to look at August. And we had just, I believe, hit all-time highs back in August. We were extremely overvalued here on the RSI. So I knew that we were due for a pullback, right? So right here would have been a situation where you start thinking, well, hey, UVXY and the VIX are opposite of the S&P 500. So basically, if the S&P 500 is overvalued, that means UVXY is undervalued. So I could have gone and bought UVXY, which I did, at an undervalued price. And once the market starts selling off and pulls back like it did and gets to undervalued territory here, that means UVXY most likely is in overvalued territory. So that would be whenever I may have sold UVXY and made a profit. And in the meantime, what happened was there are some stocks maybe that you're holding that decreased in value because the market was selling off and possibly they're at a cheaper price. So the money that, again, that you just cashed out with of UVXY, you can maybe go buy up some more shares of your particular stocks that you have um, to increase your position size. So let me just show you UBXY from the same time frame. And you see here undervalued and then made a, a nice spike, you know, once the market started correcting. So we started off at about here. And, you know, it wasn't actually necessarily undervalued, but it was about at the midway point. Oh, actually, it was, it was pretty close to undervalued. And then once the market started selling off, you see how it just kept going up and up and up. And then the market started correcting and coming back up. And what happened? Boom, starts crashing down again. So uh, this is, you know, I just wanted to show this to you because anytime that you can spot out a potential correction coming in the market, uh, you can plan it out to where you can make some money. Now, if it's a small correction and it's not that volatile, then I don't, I don't think you should hold it and think that this stock's going to, this uh, UVXY is going to rise $20, $30 because it's not. I mean, two, three, four dollars would be actually a pretty good swing trade on a market correction. And then whenever it's extremely volatile and the market, you know, for some reason that some huge catalyst comes out and you think the market's going to crash, then yeah, you may get, you know, a huge spike in the numbers like we did back in March of 2020. But uh, just be safe because, you know, this, um, these things can burn you because you know I've gotten burned on these on these plays as well. So I don't I don't really play them that much anymore. Um, but you can you know like I said though, this is constantly just decaying and you just every now and again you're going to have an occasional spike. But overall it's just in a, in a downtrend. So it's not something that I would uh, bank on for the long term. So that's all I have today, guys. I hope you liked the video. Hopefully you got something out of it. If you did then hit that like button, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, uh, share this video and the channel with a friend who may benefit from our content. If you have anything that you would like me to cover in the future, if you want to talk about a particular stock or a particular uh, financial area, then feel free to comment below and I'll make a video on that as well. So other than that, we'll see you in the next video.